Bond, thank you so much. Uh, the executive director of the Sewage and Water Board, we appreciate your time, sir. Uh, we know that there was a little bit of a power issue overnight, so I was wondering if you could just maybe explain exactly what happened that you know may have caused a little bit of uh, an issue for your system. Absolutely. Good morning. I'm on the phone, just for the record. Um, yeah, I mean, to say we had a power issue probably is, is an understatement in a way, to be honest with you, because we have multiple uh, situations throughout the event. And, you know, it's not surprising when you have a, a mechanical drainage system that relies on hundreds of pieces of equipment, whether it's electrical or mechanical or uh, even feeders. So invariably you have a, a, a situation that uh, we are typically prepared to respond to. So so we had a series of situations where we have uh, we lost power from Entergy to some of the station, uh, at least one station, uh, that's the uh, pumping station 14 in New Orleans East, and we, we then we went, we switched the power to or the source of power to our backup generator, and we resumed pumping in that area. Um, another major one is that had to do with the, um, we have five EMDs. These are uh, basically large diesel uh, generators that we were, were powering uh, multiple pumps in three different stations. And we had an issue with, uh, with those EMDs. It wasn't the EMDs that failed per se, but it was a one common auxiliary pieces of equipment that that supports those five EMDs that went down and that that caused some uh, setback basically in our ability to uh, keep up with uh, with the rainfall which you know shouldn't be lost on anybody that you know we had about seven inches of rain last night and the intensity of rain varied but uh, it went as high as two and a half inches uh, to three inches an hour which we say that all the time that overwhelms any system, especially our system that can handle typically an inch an hour. So now as a storm has passed and it's, it's over us now, we're, it's gone, um, what is the biggest focus right now for you and, and, and Sewage and Water Board? Well, uh, you know, the big picture obviously continue to uh, stay on track with the, our power uh, complex because, you know, while we had lots of power yesterday, they're all antiquated piece of equipment. They're all cobbled together to come up with the necessary power that we need to drive all the pumps that we need. Uh, you know, in, in, um, in comparison to the future, which is 2025, then you end up having one source of power that will drive every piece of equipment that we need, uh, you know, at, at any given time. So that is going to simpl simplify our world with a durable, reliable source of power for the next 50 years. So that that's that's down another year. And then in the meantime, obviously, we continue to refine our processes. And uh, yesterday, we were the first day that we used our T4 that had been down for a long time, as you may know, and it had been restored. And it proved, you know, it was very, uh, it functioned very well. And now it gives us a little bit higher confidence to rely on it uh, more for the next event uh, versus the EMDs that, again, you know, have been prone to uh, breakdowns uh, during, during situations like last night. Uh, Mr. Corban, I know that you inherited this very much of an antiquated system. Some of these pieces of equipment are more than 100 years old. I know that there's also been many efforts to try and reform the Sewage and Water Board and kind of come up with some sort of game plan. But for folks, I know, you know, 2025 is a whole year away. And we spoke with many folks this morning who are very upset with that water inside their home. So is there any kind of light at the tunnel or any kind of, you know, relief that we can give them in the meantime to ensure that something like this does not happen again. Because like you said, right now it's just kind of like a patchwork quilt of pieces at the sewage and water board office because you don't have some of the, you know, major pieces that you need at this time. And again, that all comes down to funding too. Y'all have been fighting for funding. Absolutely. I mean, again, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel. That means 2025 and that, that, uh, seems far away for many people, but when you put it in perspective, we're changing how this this system worked and has worked for many many years, not very effectively. You know, within a year, away from you know, from getting a totally different 
setup that is more durable, more reliable, and and functional. So, I mean, it's, it's, that should not be lost on people. In the meantime, you know, we're going to continue to tweak what we do and refine it, but capacity is, is, is at what it is. I mean, we have a specific amount of pumps. We used every pump that we needed yesterday, so it was not a matter of uh, pumping capacity. Uh, aside from that situation I just shared about the power itself, which hopefully will go away uh, once we switch to the substation in 25, you know, the pump, the pumping uh, capacity is, is uh, you know, in, in, a good, in a good place. The pumps are, are functional, and we stand to bring another five pumps on, uh, you know, uh, in a matter of, you know, six months or so so we're, we're you know we're we're doing everything we can to increase capacity we're going to be taking over the um minor system drainage system from the city we're going to have a more robust uh catch basin cleaning you know uh, from day one in january is when we take over we're preparing a contract to start uh, you know as early as january with with cleaning catch basins which we think is in the a critical piece of the whole uh, drainage system, you know, if, if the water isn't isn't allowed to go in freely, we can pump it. And um, but yesterday, you know, overall the biggest driver of water standing in in streets was the intensity of the rain and the amount of rain that fell. I want to ask you this. Um, earlier this morning, I'm not sure if you saw, you saw this, but uh, one of our reporters, Deja Brown, spoke to a woman uh, in Lakeview, and she was incredibly frustrated uh, because her home was flooded. And she says that, you know, as a New Orleans resident, we deserve better. We need better. Um, you have a lot of folks all across uh, New Orleans uh, that are frustrated uh, with what seems to be, in, like you talked about, an antiquated system, uh, Randy, but just folks are just downright tired and just want a better system to prevent things like this from happening. Um, what's your message out there to, uh, to folks who are frustrated at what they're seeing right now? Well, I mean, first of all, it's not lost on us. We're very mindful of the, 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 the frustration that exists, and I would be frustrated too if my house flooded. And because of that, we, we make this as a top priority for us. You know, draining the city is a top priority. It's a very critical mission of ours. And that's why we've been working so hard. And, you know, nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens without steady funding. That's why we embarked on the, one of the largest infrastructure projects in the city, meaning the, the power, you know, the power complex. You know, that's something maybe should have been done 20 years ago. And it wasn't. And now, you know, Within a year away from total completion and a game changer in terms of how we, how we manage our our drainage system and how we power it. So I mean that cannot be lost on people. I mean this is a major major uh, undertaking with with a uh, very significant change in in how we uh, operate and how we uh, ma manage our our water. Um, but again, you know, I have to be realistic and set um, realistic expectations in terms of, um, you know, the intensity of the rain at times will overwhelm any system anywhere. I mean, I lived in other cities, and other cities flood when when you when you encounter three or four inches of rain an hour. There's no system that's designed to manage that amount of rain and then that's why you you would you would experience water in the streets and obviously nobody wants to see anything beyond that but then if you know when you have a an event like yesterday unfortunately some areas are more prone than others and i mean i don't have a very good answer to our residents who are frustrated with us and you mentioned that the emds went offline could you give us a time frame as to how long the pumps may have been out in that given time frame? Um, I don't have the exact numbers, uh, and we will we will put that in an in after action report. And, you know that uh, that's something we we routinely do, and we make it public. We submit it to the city council, to state legislators, and many other policymakers. So that that will be out shortly. Uh, I mean, we know uh, for a fact that it. 
it, it uh, hampered our ability to drain the water. Uh, you know, as it wasn't as quick as we wanted it to be. So that's where you know the difference was in terms of not having uh, power to the, some of those pumps. We don't believe it caused any you know uh, backup or a, a rise in the elevation, but it took us a little longer time to drain that that, that water. Kassan Korban. Yeah, thank you so much, the Executive Director of the Sewage and Water Board. We appreciate your time, and again, um, we appreciate uh, maybe even hearing that after-action report that might be out um, in the coming weeks. So thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, you heard right there. He asked him about, you know, trying to get uh, information and, and, and help out the folks there. I mean, they have a lot going on for sure. Yeah. We've got much more of the aftermath of Francine coming up right after the break. We'll take you to Jefferson Parish, also the Bayou region, to get an update on what's happening there. Stay with us.